Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for uh, the DNP CRNA info session for Marion University. I uh, just want to thank you so much for being here, um, taking the time out of your busy day uh, to hear just a little bit about the program. Um, and we hope that uh, we'll be able to, to get you the information that you are looking for today. Uh, really, the biggest thing that we want to you guys today is we want to answer your questions. We want to tell you about our program. We're really excited about the CR. Marion, uh, but we mostly want to get all your questions answered. Um, and so hopefully we'll be able to do that. So what I want to do first, though, is I want to turn it over to Dr. Gomez. Dr. Gomez is the Dean of the Leighton School of Nursing. Um, so Dr. Gomez, take it away. Thank you, Kyle. Welcome to everyone. Um, I'm Dorothy Gomez and I serve as Dean of the Leighton School of Nursing. I've been at the Leighton School of Nursing for over 20 years, but in this position only about five years. I can say with um, full enthusiasm that it's a wonderful place to work and be. Uh, a few years ago when we um, started our osteopathic school of medicine, we moved into a beautiful educational building. I know many Many of you may have not uh, may have not been able to come and see it during this time, but when you do get a chance to visit, um, we really enjoy bringing people around. I know Kyle's going to open up a video that will will take you on a little virtual tour. Um, we're very lucky to have uh, a good team of CRNA uh, faculty and um, headed by Dr. Stelflug. Um, he'll be talking to you in a minute. And um, the assistant director, uh, Lee Sutherland, Suther Summerlin, my goodness, Grady there. Um, and then we have two new faculty that also will be introduced. Um, I heard Kyla told me that there are some Marion graduates in the audience tonight. Um, I usually, when this is face to face, I always point you out. Um, but um, I'm always happy to see um, Marion graduates come back to the university. It's a uh, um, because I know they know it's a wonderful place to be. So. Um, uh, enjoy the night. Ask a lot of questions. I'm sure the team will will provide you with all the answers you need. Um, I'm available at dgomez. Marion, no, dgomez at Marion. Edu. Um, if you have any questions, I'd greatly I'd appreciate hearing from you. Um, go ahead, Kyle. Thanks. Thank you, Dr. Gomez. Um, again, we just we're really excited to share about our program and about Leighton School of Nursing and specifically our CRNA program um, here at Marion. Uh, so I'm going to take just a couple of minutes. Uh, my part's the boring part, the the admissions part. So I'll just get that out of the way really quick, um, and then we'll move on to the more fun stuff, which is learning really specifically about the program. Uh, that you're interested in tonight. So uh, just from an admission standpoint, um, remember that the deadline to apply for this program is October the 30th. I'm sure that all of you know that at this point, but I just want to make sure you, you do know. And that means your entire application has to be complete by the 30th. Um, on the line tonight, um, and uh, I'm sure if you have already started an application, you've heard from her multiple times, is Linda Overholt. Linda is our coordinator of graduate um, admissions here at Marion, um, and she's the one that will really help you through the process. Um, and if you have questions, if you have concerns, if something's not working right, um, anything like that, please reach out to Linda um, and she'll take care of that. Uh, you can reach us by going to gradmissions at marion.edu. I'll make sure I put that in the chat here in just a little bit, just so you have that contact information. Um, so the big thing to remember, if you haven't started an application yet, please do that. Please do that as soon as possible. Uh, you don't have to necessarily start it and complete it in one day, though some do, um, but at least get it started. That way we can start communicating with you and we can start getting uh, those pieces taken care of so you know what has to get turned in right away. Um, so an easy way is just to go to marion.edu 
Uh, when you get to the main page up on the right hand corner, uh, you'll see apply now. Just click that button. It'll take you to the apply now page um, and you'll select the Marion University, not the osteopathic link, the other one, the Marion, the main Marion University um, link. Just click there and it'll take you to start our application. You'll just need to create uh, a new account there. Um, and then you'll want to just make sure that you're picking the program as the uh, nurse anesthetist program. Uh, so it's a real simple process, getting that through, getting that submitted. Um, and then we do require all of your transcripts. We do mean all of your transcripts. So please make sure you get all of those into us. Um, and then getting your letters of recommendation, all of that stuff. That's what Linda will help you with. Um, but like I say, it really is an easy process to get through, um, but we're here to help you every step along the way. Um, those are the biggest things that I wanted to mention from an admission side. Again, I just want to hit the, the, the big things, but the, the main thing that I want to get um, across tonight just from an admissions point of view is I don't want your application um, to not be looked at. And what would cause us not to look at it is if it does come in after the deadline. So October 30th, that's it. Um, it is a program that is very competitive. So we want to look at everybody's application, but past the 30th, we just can't um, continue to go past that date. Um, once you get it in and the earlier you get it in, we'll start uh, reaching out to you. And if you're selected for an interview, um, those interviews are happening right now. Um, so, you know, the, the quicker you get your application in, the quicker we can get to it, we can review it. Um, and if, if, uh, granted, we would, we would grant you an interview then. Uh, so just want to make sure I, I know I've said it multiple times, but October 30th, get that in, uh, get that completed. And if you have questions, um, please reach out to myself or Linda. Um, and if, if it's a program specific question, that's fine. Still reach out to us. Um, and then if we don't have the answer, we will get it to Dr. Steffleg and his team. Um, and they are very quick about responding. We really appreciate um, how much we work together and how much we're, we collaborate on this process. So we'll get those answer, those questions answered very quickly. So that's all I wanted to share about admissions. Now I wanna uh, move on to what Dr. Gomez um, was uh, talking about. And that is we have a quick video that we do want to share with you. Uh, we wish that we could have you on campus. We wish that we could have you in our beautiful uh, building and we could show you um, all the technology that, that you'll be able to partake of here at Marion. Um, but that's just not possible um, at this point, as all of you know. Um, so in place of that, um, we have a video that's going to show you um, uh, Dr. Stepleg a little bit more, um, and we'll show you our incredible lab uh, that our students get to work in. So, uh, Liz, are you ready to go with the video? I sure am. I'm going to try my best to get it right the first time. Hold on. Can everyone see it? This is Dr. Brad Stelflug. We're at the Hill-Rom Simulation Center at Marion University where we train the next generation of CRNAs. One of the very few places in the country that actually have this high simulation practice. Here is where we control uh, our high fidelity HPS sim man. Basically anything that the students do with this patient, the patient is going to respond uh, as a human being would, uh, he hemodynamically, respiratory-wise, uh, with all medications and uh, different procedures that they do on this patient. And this is just one of our simulation centers that we have at Marion University. As students come in here the first year, they're going to be practicing uh, intubation skills uh, on our mannequins, uh, just like you would with ACLS. Uh, but then as you progress, we are going to add different task trainers uh, such as spinals and epidurals on the backs. We train you to put in A-lines and central lines. 
So you're going to get lots of hands-on uh, training with the ultrasound, with needle uh, manipulation. And what that culminates to is before you go into the clinical site, I'm going to have you get your routine down for uh, putting a patient to sleep and waking them up for general anesthetic. So uh, we have one of the anesthesia machines that's used in the clinical sites. Um, again, the monitors are going to show everything that we do uh, to the patient. We uh, take our drugs and we just scan the drug. The computer now knows that this is propofol and then when I inject it into the IV, uh, if I give five cc's, the computer is going to register that it's five uh, cc's of propofol that I gave that patient. And we go ahead and we intubate this patient. We also can do cricothyrotomies. We can do needle decompressions on this patient. Uh, patient has pulses, basically um, about as realistic as we can get it. I'm not going to teach you just some of the skills. I'm going to teach you independence and to be able to do everything. What you choose to do afterwards in your career, um, I 100% support and just basically want you to be happy doing the greatest job on the planet, which is nurse anesthesia. Okay. So as you can tell by the video, uh, Dr. Steflug just a little bit likes what he does. Um, and that's really exciting for me uh, as, as I watch uh, students come in, just knowing how incredible our faculty is um, and the group that, that really will be working with you so much. So what we're going to do for the rest of the night really is uh, Dr. Stefleg and his team are going to talk with you about the specifics of the program um, and go through uh, some information with you. Um, and then at the end of the night, we are going to open it up for questions. What we'll ask is that you go ahead and type questions in the chat feature. Um, do that any point, any, any point throughout the night, go ahead and put those, and then we'll try to um, watch those. And if we can answer them really quick, we might, but at the end, um, we'll do a Q&A and we'll read through, through those and get all of those answered. Um, because really that's why we're here tonight is to make sure um, that the questions you have about our program are answered. Um, so don't be shy, ask away, whether it's about program, whether it's about the admissions piece, um, we'll make sure that we get those answered for you. Um, if you leave tonight and you're sleeping and you wake up and you thought, ah, I forgot to ask this question, that's okay. Uh, please reach out to us again, gradmissions at marine.edu. We'll make sure that we get everything, um, all of your questions answered for you. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pass it off to our faculty team, um, the CRNA program, and I'm going to pass it off for them to introduce themselves. So I'll start with our assistant program director, Dr. Summer Summerlin Grady. Why don't we go with Dr. Gould? Uh, because uh, Dr. Summerlin Grady is having a little internet problems. She got the dreaded yellow triangle. Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Dr. Gould. I'm one of the newest faculties um, uh, members who were um, was hired for this fall. Um, I'm very excited to join um, Marion University. Um, my background before I even came here, uh, I have 16 years experience as a CRNA. I was a chief CRNA at a hospital and clinical coordinator where we had five different nurse anesthesia programs come. Also a chief CRNA at uh, three endoscopy centers right outside of Philadelphia. Um, my expertise is in diversity. Um, in nurse anesthesia, health disparities related, um, cultural competence, um, anything that's related to, on the diversity spectrum, that is my expertise. And uh, the the students who attend uh, Marion University, if you express any type of uh, interest whatsoever, particularly in that field, in, in that in that area. You know, I, I can be one of the uh, faculty members that will chair your your DMP committee. So I'm very excited about that. So um, again, um, you'll be able to um, ask us any questions during this during this session. And I, you know, I look forward to uh, responding to you and, you know, hopefully that you, you'll be able to consider Marion University. 
Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Gould. Dr. Franco, could you uh, introduce yourself? And give us a little background. Sure. Uh, my name is Sarah Franco. I am. I was adjunct faculty. I apologize. I'm in my car. I was adjunct faculty over the summer and then joined Marion full time um, in the fall. Um, my primary focus in practice, uh, I've been a CRNA for 11 years. I graduated in 2009 from Webster University in St. Louis, um, and I currently reside in St. Louis and work at a level one trauma facility um, here kind of in the heart of the city. So um, my kind of area of expertise. All right, Dr. Franco, we had a little bit of internet issues with you, I believe. Uh, your specialties are trauma anesthesia and OB anesthesia, correct? Well, I know you give wonderful lectures on both of those, and um, you always bring the best pictures to lecture. I, of course, I kind of like that kind of stuff. But anyways, Dr. Sumlin Grady's been practicing anesthesia for over 20 years. Uh, she does a lot of endoscopy uh, anesthesia, uh, which is becoming more and more popular and uh, not a bad way to go um, because not a lot of on-call endoscopy is happening. So if you don't like those call shifts or those night shifts, that's not a bad way to go. Anyways, she's going to be uh, really directing your clinical experience. She's our assistant uh, program director and responsible for those clinical placements. So, I am Dr. Brad Stelflug. I've been practicing for about 21 years. Um, I don't know that I have a specialty because I just like everything. So, I just keep bouncing around. Uh, I like rural anesthesia. I like big anesthesia. I like independent. I like uh, anesthesia care team. As long as I'm doing anesthesia, I like it. So, that's about, as it, that's about it on that. I uh, love to teach. Hate to hear my own voice. It's a painful to watch that video. I hope you guys can forgive me for uh, those talking slow and the ums on everything. Uh, let's go ahead and do a little, I'm gonna show a little PowerPoint presentation here for you, give you a little bit of an overview of what I think is honestly one of the better programs in the country. And we are only getting better day by day and it's because of great uh, students. Absolutely, the students uh, make a huge difference in any program. So motivation is the key. Uh, we, we're the Marion Knights, so we're night anesthesia here. Um, I, one of our goals is that we become known all around the country uh, for quality education, uh, producing excellent CRNAs. This is a 36 month program, nine semesters, two years. You're going obviously from your BSN to your DNP. We start in May, we end in May. We're a front loaded program, which many of the programs are nowadays, which means you're going to get your didactic. We're not going to, uh, in that first year, we're not going to send you out to the clinical space without having a ton of knowledge behind you. Um, we believe uh, for patient safety, it's just a better way to go to teach you up front uh, a lot of the critical things you need to know before you starting touching the patient. Um, clinicals will be moderate in the second year and heavy in the third year. So as we're working you up to graduation and boards, you are going to be in the clinical arena at least four days a week. So uh, very intense, but this is where you're gonna refine your technique. Uh, let's see here. Come on. All right. And as Dr. Gomez mentioned, we have a brand new, beautiful building. And Dr. And uh, Kyle Hattenberg was saying the same thing: is Wow, we wish we could tour all of you guys through this. The the facilities that uh, Marion has uh, given us to use is just phenomenal. So we have the medical school and the nursing school in the same building, along with a couple other specialties. So the front loaded program, uh, this is just the classes that you would have that first year. We're also gonna get you in that sim lab. Like I said in the video, I want to help you refine some of those anesthesia techniques. It's gonna increase patient safety, obviously, but I want you to be more comfortable when that real patient is there. We build on your nursing skills. Don't forget your ICU nursing skills as you come to us. You, we're gonna build on top of those. So you already come, you know, subject matter experts at your unit. Now we're gonna add anesthesia on top of that. 
Uh, we do, oh, the video went over that second part there. Thursday evenings, what we're gonna do after this process is we're going to um, have a meeting with all three classes. We, all of us faculty believe strongly because we had it in our programs where we get to meet peer-to-peer uh, -peer teaching. We talk about anesthesia issues that are current. We talk about clinical issues. Uh, you are always learning. It's in a very low stress environment. And uh, we also use that for announcements. So you keep uh, in touch with the program, no matter if you're in Nashville at clinicals or you're in Indianapolis and in the didactic at Marion, you are going to feel like you are a part of uh, the university the whole time and be up to date with everything that's going on. So year two, you see in these blue slides, you got clinicals the whole year. The yellow is the fun part. We have DNP projects, what Dr. Gould was mentioning. If you have uh, subjects that really interest you, uh, we ask you to start exploring those more. This is, you have two objectives when you come to a DNP nurse anesthesia program. The one is fairly obvious to become a nurse anesthetist. The other one, DNP, this is doctor of nursing practice. We are going to, teach you the skills on how to take research and get it to the patient level. That is the one thing that um, research has shown that isn't happening. So they created the doctor of nursing practice to help um, mitigate the problem, get this wonderful research uh, at the bedside so it can start benefiting patients. Uh, when you get into the second year, clinical or the didactic classes, you're always going to have these, but they're going to be on Mondays. Uh, so that's going to give you plenty of time for clinicals, DNP projects, and study, lots and lots of study. Third year, again, the clinical in blue, you're going to have uh, lots of experience in there. Uh, we do bring you back that last semester into the sim lab, got some wonderful crisis management, kind of see how you put everything together over the three years and um, just give you the confidence that you're going to be able to do this on your own when you get out. Some more pictures of the campus. Um, too many times we get so involved in Evans Center, we forget that there's the rest of Marion. Marion is a beautiful, beautiful campus. Uh, when you come, when you get a chance to visit, when you're a student here, absolutely visit all parts of the campus. It's all there for you, lots of support. Um, here's our faculty, as you can see, we have lots of years of experience and diverse talents to offer you. Uh, you're gonna find your own niche. You're gonna have a, super, um, a supervisor, an advisor, one of us faculty throughout, that's gonna be the same throughout all four years. We're gonna follow you and be totally committed to your success in this program. Just a list of our clinical sites. We do have a lot of them. I want you to get a wide range of clinical opportunities. You're not gonna to go to every site. Every site has different uh, pros and cons to it, just like every job would, right? Some of them are better than others, but now you can learn what you want. Um, so when you go and select a job, you know what questions to ask what experiences, what practice that you would thrive in. We do go to Tennessee. Uh, the culture is just a little bit better between uh, anesthesia kind of teams down in Tennessee than it is in um, Indiana. Plus I can get you a very strong pediatric rotation uh, at Vanderbilt uh, University. Uh, and we are also in Ohio where our other strong pediatric uh, rotation is. And preceptors are wonderful. They're, they're also committed to your success. Um, they really do take a personal investment in you. Um, and I would say the students feel that so much that uh, 11 of the 13 students I have graduated and working, they're all at our clinical sites. Uh, they, they loved how they were treated in the practice that they were doing, um, that they chose to work at our clinical sites. We are Catholic University. Uh, I mention that because it's wonderful support of any religion or non-religion at Marion. I, I'm not Catholic, but I have been supported and loved uh, by the nuns, the fathers, everybody here. It's a, it's a wonderful, loving place to be. 
Uh, the part I'm very excited about besides outstanding faculty is we have this plastic guy here. Uh, very high fidelity simulator that you're not going to find at very many programs. Uh, it is very responsive. If like whatever you record that you're giving, it's going to respond exactly that way. So uh, I my philosophy is if everybody's going to make mistakes, let's make them in the sim lab, right? It's safer to make them in the sim lab. Yes, you can uh, have this guy demise on you but that's better than a real patient. So let's get all of that learning experience out. Let's spend lots of time in the simulation lab and get you all tuned up for patient, uh, patient care. Critical thinking, it's not an option. You gotta bring it uh, every day. We always talk about, you need to know the why. This is what makes us the better product if you know the anesthesia landscape. Um, CRNAs, you bring that life experience, that work experience as ICU nurses, and we build the anesthesia component on it. You're critical thinking every time you go into the ICU. You're doing it minute to minute. Now we're going to go to anesthesia where you got to do it second to second. So we can treat whatever we see, but if we don't know what's causing it, we may treat it the wrong way. So we're always about the why. We're always about you understanding uh, your differential diagnosis, what's going on. Critical thinking, it's a must, got to have it, and we strive to have you work on it every day. Uh, our program is fairly robust for regional. Uh, some programs don't have the ability for that offer. I've uh, What I have in the regional blocks in the parentheses is what's required for your graduation by the COA, which is our accrediting body, and the number behind it is what the students that graduated averaged for numbers. So we're quite a bit higher about that. We have all the trainers and the ultrasounds for doing that. We have a workshop actually coming up this Saturday. So um, they have been doing online classes to learn about all the blocks. And now we're gonna be doing a big scanning uh, workshop all day Saturday and um, have different models that we can do needling and practice needling under the ultrasound. And then, of course, lab time. I have lab classes. The lab's going to be open, obviously, for practice and testing on those classes. But then other times, uh, I'm at the university. If you don't see the lab open, ask me to open it up, and there you go. You can be in the lab practicing, okay? Uh, we, we're very strong uh, proponents of simulation. That is a very quick overview of what I think is one of the stronger programs in the nation. And what are your guys' questions? I have a question. Yes, please. Yeah, my name is Julius Barhams. I'm from Elkhart, Indiana. Well, my question was um, for the clinicals. So uh, the out of state, like the Tennessee and the Ohio, is, um, is that something? How many weeks is, are those clinical rotations? That is an absolutely awesome question. Oop, we got a little bit. If you could put your mute back on, then we won't have the circle. Great, thanks. Um, so Nashville, if you go to Vanderbilt, it's a 10-week rotation. If uh, the other rotations right now in Ohio and in Tennessee are four-week rotations, but the clinical sites and the students have requested that they go to eight weeks. Um, we've been, as faculty, we all had the four-week rotations, getting you a lot of different experiences. The preceptors want to have you a little bit longer uh, so they can build on what you know. And the students want the familiarity with the spot to um, be able to build on their comfort level also. So uh, starting in uh, 2021, we are going to go to those longer. So you would have eight to 12 weeks in Tennessee or eight weeks in Ohio. Um, we are looking at Illinois as another state coming online. We, we do uh, require you to get a Nashville, well, you don't have to get a national license. Now, if you have Indiana, get the compact license because Tennessee is a compact state. Unfortunately, Ohio and Illinois are not compact states yet. Hopefully they come online quick. Um, but yes, and Elkhart, we are hopefully going to be starting up there in January too at Elkhart General. So 
Yeah, you could stay right at home with clinicals there. Great question. How many applicants do you usually have and how many do you interview? Okay, currently right now, uh, the, or the numbers I got, oh, Kyle, I think this was yesterday's numbers, was 161 applications. Lots of applications. You're gonna find that as you look at any program, lot highly, highly competitive. It's getting more like med school in that uh, students are applying to multiple programs. How much do we interview? Um, we're looking to try to interview 80 this year. So uh, I can't emphasize enough Kyle's sort of push to get your stuff in. Um, call up those references and say, hey, uh, don't forget about me. Please send that in. Please send it in as soon as you can. And then if you need help with transcripts or anything, Linda is the best. She is just absolutely fabulous. So um, she's going to help you get all of that. All right. If the clinical sites are out of state, are we required to attend class on campus? Also, is lodging provided for uh, out of state sites? Excellent questions. So I am very aware of when students are outside of um, at attending campus. What they will do is they will attend us virtually for that period of time. If you're in your junior year, you have days to get back in for the simulation and stuff because clinical is only two days a week. It's those junior, it's those senior students doing those rotations that have difficulty, and I don't want students driving at night. So um, I want you to be safe. So we um, modify things so that they can tune in. Uh, which is one of the things we're learning with COVID, right? Is we're learning this virtual environment. Now, do we provide lodging? We do not. Uh, I tried to look around at other sites or other programs. There's not a lot of programs that do. I know some do, um, but you know, I believe in our sites. I wouldn't send you to that site if I didn't believe in it. If there wasn't extreme value for you, there is no way I would send you to a distance site that didn't have extreme value for your learning. So I definitely uh, do that. I'm very sensitive to cost. It, it's, it's a lot of money. All anesthesia programs are very similar uh, and how they present it is a little bit different. Um, and it ends up being a large loan at the end of the day. Uh, very public knowledge, you can look at what CRNAs make. It's not about the money. I don't like to talk about the money, but I am gonna mention it this way. What you make is gonna pay off those loans awfully quick. Okay, so the loans you take out for that housing, don't worry about it. It's gonna take care of itself pretty quick. Okay, we went from CCNN, CCRN preferred to required. Um, we did. We we believe in extreme value. Those that information that you learn for the CCRN is what we're building on in this program, and it's a standardized test. Guess what you have to do to become a CRNA? You have to pass a standardized test. I'm not one to say these standardized tests are fair or anything like that. I just know it is what it is, and you got to pass it. So. Um, we make our tests very similar to that. We want you to get used to that format. We want you to get, try to maximize your success when you take those standardized tests. Some people have a very extreme hard time with standardized tests. That is not something we're gonna be able to fix per se in this program, right? We do have student services that are wonderful and they will work with anybody day and night for as many days as it takes to get you successful, but you have to know yourself. And so we decided to make that um, a uh, requirement. And you may not have it yet. Come as long as you got a date on that. Uh, what we have is we have what we call a provisional acceptance. So you can be accepted provisionally. So if you don't have the requirement of graduate stats or stats to come into the course and you're accepted as um, one of the people that are going to come in in May, what you get is a provisional admit. 
That means you have to meet those qualifications before May. Otherwise, we have a very happy person on the wait list who gets to take that spot. And that has happened. But um, yeah, it, there's there's no, and the, uh, this person talks about their experience. That, there's no substitute for experience. Uh, we want your life experiences. Everybody has different life experiences and we want to build upon that. Uh, one of the things we are adamant about as faculty is that you form groups. We all come from, you know, we're very particular on how we studied. We are, the BSN wasn't that big of, wasn't as hard as most people say it is, right? We have our own way of study. We have our highlighters in that certain way and we want to study our own way. That's not the way anesthesia school works, guys. Uh, so much information, different life experiences are gonna be able to get certain concepts easier and probably be able to explain it to you better. So high success when students get together. So we absolutely promote that. Um, has COVID affected students getting in their clinical hours? Yes, it did. Uh, all, well, not all, all our clinical sites said no students right at the beginning of COVID. So we are struggling at this point. They are working. I am so proud of our students. They are working like crazy to get those experiences. And we are trying as hard as we can to provide them with what they need to graduate on time. Uh, it's still unknown of what's going to happen. Uh, the class, so that's the class that's graduating now. The class behind them is pretty much made up all of that time. So I don't see an issue with you guys unless the pandemic kicks up again. And who knows what America's response will be to the pandemic. Um, the AANA was visiting with uh, President Pence along with the other uh, nursing professions uh, when nursing professions training was stopped because of COVID and we were imploring him, don't let this happen because there's already a shortage and all you're doing is making it worse. And by golly, we're nurses. Why are you kicking us out of what we need to do, right? You can't go to school, but oh yeah, we want you in the ICU taking care of all of these patients. Didn't make a whole lot of sense, but um, hopefully if, this ever happens again in our lifetime, there'll be a better response to that. Uh, do, you, um, do you accept graduate credits from Portage University or Ashland University for your statistics class requirements? Uh, well, I would send those in to Linda and uh, if there is a question on it, we send it to a committee and they decide on that. It's probably the easiest way to answer that because I can't give you a yes or no on that. Um, all right. Well, here we go. Walina, do you want to answer? You, you gave a great answer there. I'll let you share it with everybody. I was talking about, um, I responded to the COVID and clinical hours. Basically what I'm, um, all of the faculty is monitoring all the, the students um, when it comes to clinical hours and, and especially, um, particularly in, with the, the senior class because they'll be graduating. Uh, so the, the COA, you have, um, you have minimum requirements um, when it comes to, um, general cases and specialty cases as well. So um, in regards to the, the, the COVID, um, you, know, like, you know, like he said, you know, we're gonna be monitoring the, the situation, but for um, almost all the programs, nurse anesthesia programs across the country, the seniors were still able to graduate um, because in, in, at the beginning of the of the of, of the program, and even during the middle, you were still able to exceed your numbers. So you were able to still have those. You were still able to have those uh, particular cases. Only only place where you probably may have run into issue if it's a specialty, like if it's pediatric anesthesia, cardiac anesthesia, or something like that. But um, but again, we're going to be working with you. We're going to be on top of you when it comes to your your clinical performance.
Yes, well said, well said. Um, so the bottom line is don't worry about the COVID. Uh, we can't waste time or energies worrying about COVID. It is what it is. Um, so would you consider ICU traveling nursing good experience when applying? If you're in the ICU taking sick care of sick patients, that's good experience and why haven't you applied yet? Let's get that application in, Sydney. come on. We are looking for good nurses with ICU experience. Um, well, Lin Linda, this one's for you. Are you seeing the chat? The question is for admission. One of the university I attended, which is outside the country, could not be found in, in your list. How do I add it? Sorry, I couldn't find my unmute button here. Um, just send me an email to the GR admissions email about the school and I will be able to add it to your application. Um, I can't emphasize how wonderful and magical Linda is. If you have any of these questions, uh, she's able to answer them. I, I, I'm getting transcripts from all over the world and she's able to get that stuff done. So uh, don't be shy. She uh, will get your answers to you very quickly. Uh, critical care transport flight nursing is not uh, part of the ICU experience that we count. Um, there are some, and I'm not saying it's not a good experience. It is a life experience that's very valuable. Um, and you're even going to have some skills that correlate very well with anesthesia. It's just not something, it's just not what we have as part of our requirements. COA is a little bit strict on what they allow to have in. Uh, they, they establish some of the minimums and then each uh, program can change that minimum, making it a little bit more strict if they wish. Uh, and we have decided at this time that we are not counting that as ICU experience. Not saying it isn't great experience. You can intubate bouncing against walls on a choppy flight. I mean, yeah, that's in start IVs. Oh, good gracious. Yes, absolutely. Great experience. We're just not counting it as ICU time right now. Is ICU experience in a level three trauma accepted? It is. We do accept level three ICU. So if you if that's your experience, you can apply. Um, ultimately, you are competing against each other, and that's with every anesthesia program. Uh, the the minimums are there, and every program is going to look at everybody and interview the people that meet their minimums, and then who applied to that program that day and how do you stack up uh, to that or that year and how do you stack up to them? That's ultimately how that goes. Uh, would level two or level one trauma centers, the IC experience in them be a little bit more favored? Yes, but uh, that meets our minimum and yeah, please apply. Uh, what qualify, oh, let's see. What qualities are you looking for in the applicants you wanna interview? I think that's a Dr. Franco question. Um, so we are looking for, uh, Dr. Stelflug um, mentioned um, critical care experience, um, leadership, uh, both, you know, maybe in, um, in a community sense, community involvement, um, as well as even leadership um, on your floor and things like that. Um, did I freeze up? No? Okay, sorry. Everybody else froze up. Patients, um, anything that you've done for personal growth, so showing in the operating room, um, taking graduate study courses, just anything that really indicates to us that you have really worked toward um, making this profession um, something that you're advancing towards. So, so I would say that those are the things that we are looking for. 
Thank you. Uh, couldn't have said it better. And how do we make our decision? It's hard. You guys are awesome. Just going to say it like it is. You guys are awesome. Uh, so we get the unen unenviable task of trying to narrow down a whole slew of great people down to 24. Uh, we, we assign points for different qualities and we try to keep it on the point system. We have two faculty uh, evaluators. You, you would interview with um, two of us faculty at different times so we can collaborate and see, you know, see if we agree on the points. You get to be interviewed by students. They get input uh, into the say. And then we have a little quiz on background knowledge that I think you should know to come into the program because you're using it every day in the ICU. And so that is accumulated a points and that helps us make our decisions. It's not all about that. Um, sometimes somebody just has that uh, super great story that um, we have to give a little exception to and we're willing to do that. Um, it, if Mother Teresa was doing everything she was in, in nursing school at the same time, I don't think she would have her 4.0 or 3.8. I think she would have a 3.05. And uh, we got to take that into consideration, right? So there's a lot of things that go into this. We try to holistically paint a picture, and it's hard. You guys are complex and you're awesome, but we try to get the best holistic picture we can of each candidate and uh, put the team together or the class together that way. Uh, do, 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 do. Okay, Vincent wants me to explain about the culture of anesthesia in Indiana versus Tennessee. Uh, Dr. Franco's laughing. Um, you, you just got to be in the OR for a little bit. <laughs> you might see that. Um, Indianapolis is a very physician dominated culture uh, in, uh, in the whole metro area. That physician domination dissipates as you get outside of the air, outside of the area. And what I mean by physician domination, it would be in places where advanced practice nursing are taking roles anesthesia, family nurse practitioning, pediatric nurse practitioners, midwifery, uh, clinical nurse specialists, uh, you know, managing very critical patients. So where we are going in and can fill those roles of physicians, there is great animosity and it's very physician dominated in Indianapolis. That is not 100% physician's stance. We have very good relationships with a lot of physician anesthesiologists, and we try to promote that through our relationships with them, the students' relationships with them. We don't wanna fight, we wanna work together, and it's all about patient safety at the end of the day. So that's what we work for. It's just Tennessee's a little further along than we are. They're a little more evolved is the way I like to say. And same with Ohio and Illinois. And Missouri, Dr. Franco. And yes. Dr. Stelflug. <laughs> yes, Dr. Green. One of the things that I would like to say is that it is that way around Indianapolis, but if you go to Southern Indiana or Northwest Indiana, it is not that way. It is very serenade friendly in those areas. Excellent. And this is from the person that's going to send you to those areas. Uh, uh, Dr. Sumlin Grady is in charge of clinicals, and she's worked in those areas, so she's very familiar with uh, faculty in the different uh, areas that we're talking about. So thank you for that. Oh, you didn't get to introduce yourself. Would you like to introduce yourself now that you got internet? No problem. I'm Dr. Lee Summerlin Grady. I've been a CRNA for 21 years. I worked in a lot of places. I started in Virginia. I've been to North Carolina, Florida, Ohio, Illinois, and now Indiana. Um, I've worked in a lot of different types of practice, um, trauma centers, hospitals, 
um, community hospitals and surgery centers. And currently I've been at Marion for 15 months. And I teach the clinical uh, practice courses that start in the second year and clinical emerging that starts in the third year. Welcome everybody. Thank you, Dr. Semelingri. Um, any specialties or fellowship experience provided like a uh, pain specialty? Oh, great questions. Uh, pain is very uh, unique subject. We do not offer it, not at this program. Uh, you could uh, go down to Jackie Rawls program down in Texas. She has a uh, post anesthesia degree uh, program down there, at Texas Christian, and I believe Middle Tennessee State has opened up one uh, for those. Uh, as far as specialties, I'm strong on that, you know, pediatrics. Uh, it, it's always going to be part of our practice, uh, unless, of course, you're at the VA, then the pediatric patient's 55, right? Uh, so we definitely want to know pediatrics. Doesn't mean you have to fall in love with pediatrics and choose pediatric anesthesia. Um, but when you have how critical those kids can be from second to second, um, it just, it gives you a confidence to be able to go into other realms of anesthesia. But do we have specialties or our fellowships? No, I actually want you to be a very well-rounded nurse anesthetist when you graduate. Does ED count? Does the uh, uh, emergency department count? Again, great experience, great life experience, but unfortunately we do not have that. Okay, which of my faculty want to answer? Is the interview more personal or clinically based? Okay, Dr. Gould. For the interview, I want to know about your, not only do I want to know about your critical care experience and that your, your commitment when it comes to um, serving on committees uh, where you work at, but I also want to know who you are too. I want to know from um, uh, questions that I ask, I can, by the end of the interview, I already know if you have a strong work ethic and that is important because you need that in order to, um, because of the demands of the program, you, you, you're, going to, you, you're going to need that uh, portion to, to get you through, right? Because don't forget um, the nurse anesthesia program is about the didactic and, and, and of course, you were already shown the um, the video about simulation, but so you have to you have to uh, do well in that as uh, too. And then clinical, it's also about the DMP projects. So there's a lot of, of different um, areas of that that you have to do and master. So, but what's going to make you get through that is your is a strong work ethic. So I want to hear your story. I want to hear why you want to become a nurse anesthetist. You know, so I, I need to I need to know that I need to know if you're genuine about this and we can we can make that decision like right away um, right after the interview. But I kind of, you know, I just want to see if I can get to know you and see if you'll be able to actually handle the stressors of, of, of the program and you can do it. I mean, I did it when I with uh, two small children, I had a five month old and an eight year old when I went into the program. So I was able to do that. And I think. Most of that came from my grandparents who never went to college at all. They they were they didn't even graduate from high school, but they had a strong work ethic. And that's how I got through. And so there's, you know, there's ways to bring some of that out during the interview. And uh and, and I know all of you uh have that. You're very motivated. And now I just want to see, you know, how you how you are gonna tell me that how you're gonna make it through the program. Thank you. Dr. Summerlin Grady, what is the greatest strength of Marion's CRNA program? You know, I think for me, it is that it is a small university, and so it has a tight-knit feel. Dr. Stelflip, number one, knows everybody's name, everybody's face. We're available around the clock. Uh, we, start, we start early in the morning being available, and we are available late at night. So... I would say also, and I can't believe that Lena didn't mention this, but diversity, there's a lot of diversity um, that we have in the program. So 
I think if no matter what you do, um, you will find your place at Marion. It's a great place to be. Well said. All right. Uh, anything in particular that you're hoping to glean from the admission essay? Um, I guess I'm the one that's been reading those. Uh, it's just, it goes to what Dr. Gould said. It's your story. What's your story? Um, you know, everybody says in their thing, I want to be a CRNA. That should be fairly obvious to me. And you don't need to waste any of your 500 words on that, right? I know you want to be a CRNA. Um, you know, they, tell me about you, your motivation. You know, that's, that's what we want to see because three years, it's going to see, it's going to fly by like the blink of an eye. It's going to be the hardest thing you've ever done in your life. And what's your grit, right? What's your grit? Tell us how much grit you have. What have you used it on in your life experience? Uh, how many students accepted out of that 80? We are allowed by the COA to take 24. So we are looking for 24 candidates for this year. So if your goal is uh, pediatric anesthesia speciality, are there jobs in Indiana? Uh, if you're talking about pediatric jobs, actually Riley is looking for CRNAs. I do not recommend CRNAs go to Riley at this particular moment because of the way they treated the three that left. Um, now Vanderbilt came up and talked to everybody here and they're building eight more ORs and they want 14 CRNAs. And they came to our university because they wanted our graduates. Um, jobs in Indiana, absolutely, positively, all of our students are having multiple job offers before they graduate. Um, lots of them have jobs before they graduate. That is not gonna be an issue. And that's one of the missions we're personally trying to fulfill for the state of Indiana is to have high qualified nurse anesthetists in all parts of Indiana. Elkhart, Indiana, looking for CRNAs, um, everywhere from like Elkhart all the way over to Gary, right? It, they need CRNAs. Uh, I'm getting texts and I'm sure the other faculty are getting texts two or three times a day just to come up and accept a job or even just to work for one day. It's amazing the need here. So the jobs in Indiana are huge. Will you get in the big medical centers in Indianapolis? Some of them are, they just are not gonna be as good a practice in my opinion, but hopefully they can start making that a little bit better. Uh, we talked about GRE scores uh, before, we don't even consider it, so you can submit it. The only thing a GRE score, the studies have shown, it shows you how, if you can take a standardized test. It really doesn't say much more than that. But of course, I like the GRE and the fact that you have to take a standardized test to become a CRNA. Um, but honestly, um, we don't even factor that in. A uh, nurse practitioner that wants to look at a CRNA program and start in a few years, get in the ICU. Um, I understand a nurse practitioner, uh, you, you have opportunities galore, right? It's one of the top three jobs in the nation right now. Um, hopefully you can parlay that to get, use your nurse practitioner in an ICU setting. That's, that would be the ultimate. So you can have that role and also in the, get the ICU experience, but we definitely need that ICU experience. Whether you're going to do it part-time and weekends to get that in addition to your uh, nurse practitioner. But we have had other nurse practitioners uh, come through our program, but they did exactly that. They e either their nurse practitioner job itself was in the ICU or they had a second job in the ICU. You guys have had great questions. Uh, we have to wrap it up now. Um, thank you so much for attending. This doesn't have to be the end, 
Uh, please email us if you have any questions. I thank you for your valuable time. I'm looking forward to reading your stories. I'm going to see. I'm looking forward to you guys telling us why we need to have you to make Marion even better. Okay. So, uh, thank you for all you do for the patients that you take care of because they may have been my loved one. Doesn't matter if they were, but I know you guys are all superstar nurses. So, thank you for your service. And yeah, I'm looking forward to getting to meet you guys. And thank you for attending. <laughs>